Amen. And Roy, we're picking up uh, where we left off at. We was talking about what does God say that we are? Or who or what? Yeah, what does God say? Who does God say we are? You know? And it's so important for us to always remember that, the, that God loves us, man. And God has his word for us has always been and will always be a blessing. And we need to just take time and focus on the, the word of God um, as we walk this walk and walk in this world. He loves us. And we want to be able to always sit there. Well, I'm just telling you, you really want to take the time and, and focus on what the will of God is for your life, you know? Uh, this is part B, uh, and, and as we get closer and closer to the, uh, what I call the holiday, uh, we, can, we can really rejoice in the fact that the blessing of God, the, the miracles of God is, is, is what we want to focus on. We really want to focus on what God says who we are. You know, and, and that's one of the things that I've been, uh, we talked about, and this is, like I said, this is part of, this would be like part two or something that you may want to call it, of what God says we are, you know? And so here I'm going to put the, put this, the title back up here. Uh, this is what we left off at, that we talked about it before, uh, as we're going into the Thanksgiving. Let's equip ourselves for recognizing who we are in Christ Jesus. What does the word say about us? And 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 because I think it's so important, especially going in even to the holidays itself, is to allow yourself and recognize what does God say about you? Because you know and I know that many people want to say uh different things about you. Some people want to say good things about you. That's a good, they take those blessings, right? You can and give God the glory for that. And, but it's, there's people in our life that they like to sit there and just really try to put us down or put you down, amen, or put me down, right? Because some people have a, some people based on the color of skin, some people have a negative uh, connotation about you. And they want to sit there and say that you're supposed to stay in a box. You're supposed to, you're supposed to prosper. Some get mad because you do prosper. I mean, those type of things happen over and over again. And then there's just some people who are trying to discredit you, trying to put a reputation against you. And I'm trying to tell you is that the only reputation that matters is God. Because you can't make people that don't want you to be successful uh, to uh, make a difference in your life. But if we sit there and we really sit there and allow ourselves to trust in what God says, and 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 because it's more, I think it's more tell you the truth. I think it, it's more building up too, when you can sit there and and trust what God says about you, Amen. So we uh, bring it up to what we were last time. This is the topic, and like I said, we're talking about making sense and understanding God's word. Nehemiah eight eight. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading of the word of God, amen? And that's why we're gonna do, as we go through these subjects, let's go into what does, what does the word say, right? So that we can build ourselves and strengthen ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. What does God say, you know? So we went in there and just a quick uh, a synopsis. We sit there and we talk about how Peter confessed Jesus Christ and we recognize that that came from or it was revealed by God that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. 
And the fact is that Jesus asked the question, who do people think I am? And Jesus said then said, I am. What well, Jesus even said in that verse 13, he said, who men says that I am the son of man? He's already telling you, I'm telling you who I am. I'm just asking you what people think I am. And then when Peter said that, he said, flesh and blood did not reveal that unto you, but God, the Father. And I'm trying to tell you the word of God is inspired by God. And what the word of God says about you is something revealed from heaven by God. And that's how you have to look at it, because I don't care. I don't know about you, but the way people think about me or you or, 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 or your friends, your enemies or foe, man, I'm telling you, uh, I think I've better. I think I've been trusting God. In the word of God. Then we've sat down and we finished up. We had closed that last session dealing with Luke 11, where Jesus was casting out devils. And, and look, instead of people sitting there glorifying God, they sit there and say that he cast out devils by devils, you know? And Jesus simply said, A house divided can't stand. How come I cast out devils? This is, you know, from Luke 18 and, and saying it says, Satan also be divided against himself. How should his kingdom stand? You know, because you said that cast out devil through Beelzebub. You know, 19, he said, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. So, so we got to sit there and understand that even when you do good, and you know that, there's some always somebody try to criticize you, envy you, look at you, they're doing the wrong thing. So don't, don't get caught in that trap. That's why it's so important for you. That's why you don't need to condemn yourself either. Who I am in Christ, not in my own abilities and not in the abilities and the eyes of other people, but who am I in the eyes of God, amen? And then here's a very interesting one, because I'm saying, I'm saying this, I'm using this subject, because how, despite what you do, people will try, those who don't like you, those who come against you, they will love to sit there and put you down. So, uh, or try to discredit you and put a reputation on you. So here, and so I'm telling you, and I'm reading these examples because if they do it to Jesus, come on now, let me come off this slide for a second. <laughs> Look, if they do it to Jesus, you know they're gonna do it to you. And you know they have done it to you. There's people out there now, I mean, hey, well, it is, it's, it's even a trip, even when talking about the color of the skin, how somebody never met you before in their whole doggone life and sit there and try to say, that person operating suspicious. And you ask them, say, why, what are they doing suspicious? It's just, they look suspicious. They even did, I think, even on election night, they sit there and some black man was over there doing whatever he's supposed to be doing with the with the balance and, and they say he looks suspicious. What did he look suspicious? He's looking around. Why shouldn't he look around? He's looking at you. <laughs> People do that. They don't, they don't know who you are and they're, 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 but just based on the color of your skin, I don't care whether you're black or white, it's, it's, it, it, it plays in a role. People don't know you're gonna sit there and automatically put you on the negative. In other words, you might, like I said, the, the glass is half full or half empty. That see, when somebody don't know you, they automatically put you in the glass half empty, negative. And that's why it's so important for you to study the word of God so you can see what does God say. Because I guarantee you, people are going to sit there and, 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 and try to come up with all kinds of reasons of saying why you are, uh, uh, are in the negative. And then in a lot of cases, it caused people to get on condemnation. Listen, there's people who kill themselves because of the reputations of assassination of character over the internet. Huh? You don't believe that? I think you do. I think you believe it besides how people have treated you. I think you have been through it. Everybody has been through it. And God is sitting there saying, that's why I need you to focus on me. That's why I need you to see what I say about you. This is what this is so important is for us to get into the word of God and understand what the word of God says about us. Huh? And understand the reason I'm using the subjects of scripture I'm using now is the fact is that if they do it to Jesus, <laughs> they're going to do it to you. If they do it to God, they'll do it to you. How many times you sit there, uh, a tragedy occurred and said an act of God? What do you mean, act of God? How are you going to put it on God? 
Oh, you're going to put everything on God, right? So therefore, everything applies. So don't put them on because he set it in motion. Those things happen that way. That's irrelevant. The point of saying is about you. Listen to me as you go into the holidays and as you recognize and deal with how people think about you. Just remember, they did it to Jesus. So they didn't do it to you. And what you need to do, the same thing Jesus does or did, is to say, <laughs> I do what my father said. I go by his will. See, his will is for all men to be saved. You know that other people don't believe that. His will is for you to be healed. Other people don't believe that. You know what I mean? He wants you to be blessed coming in and blessed going out. Other people don't want to believe that or accept that or receive that or reject that. I want you to don't reject the word of God concerning who you are. That's why you need to study the word of God. Amen. So we'll go back to the uh, sharing again. And let's go into this one. We, we, we'll start it. Now, obviously, we won't be able to finish it. Uh, but we'll pick it up on like session three. This is session two. This one, I just thought of it interesting. Like I said, they go after G, they go after you. So no matter what, sometimes you do some good thing, there's always somebody going to look at you and try to make it bad, all right? So here's an act that occurred. And watch how people responded. And watch how the person who received the blessing responded. He says right here, Jesus, this is the top subtitle, that Jesus heals a, a man born blind. And when it was the Sabbath day, when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes, then again, the Pharisee also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon my eyes, and I wash and do see. Therefore said they, therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God. This is talking about Jesus. This man is not of God because he keeps not the Sabbath day. Others say, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. Why was a division? Because they're sitting there saying, you trying to give him a reputation of a sinner. He's sitting there doing something that is a miracle. How can you do, you can't, how do you do that? How do you have somebody that can do the blessings and the miracles of God and be a sinner? The person arguing, the vision occurred because there's a division of competing narratives. And that's how people do you. They sit there and debate and argue about who you are. And they want you, their narrative to fit them concerning about you. And you need to understand, don't listen to the vision of others. Listen to what God says, because that's what matters. You are a child of God through Jesus Christ. You believe it for yourself. Don't look for people to believe it. Verse 17, and he said unto the blind man again, what says thou of him? Then he opened their eyes. He said, he's a prophet. Whoa, see? Now the man, because of what was done to him, has said he's a prophet. They are saying now this is contrary to the doggone narrative that we have decided this man to be. You know what I mean? Think about it. This is how this is how it goes in society today. This is how the world does it today. I mean, we remember Jesse Owens when he sat there and won the, the gold medal. They were sitting there saying that no, the superior man is supposed to win. And that's we got the superior people. That man, Jesse Owens, is not the superior people, but Jesse Owens sit there and say, I am not listening to you. I'm listening to what God has already told me to be. I'm confident in who I am. And when he ran his race, he blew the competition out. When he did his jump, he jumped with the power and anointing of God. And the point is that if Jesse Owens, if any team, if any sport, if any person, if you sit there and have the receive the negative of what people say, then you have a tendency to fall. But if you sit there and believe in yourself and trust that God has given you abilities and gifts, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You got to understand that because even in Jesus' situation, I'm just read, 
the people sit there and 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 try first one we talked about they try to say he cast out devils because he is a devil and that's something or the fact is the open eyes of the man the born blind and and it was a miracle but they didn't want to receive it because it wasn't the narrative they had for him that's what i'm trying to tell you don't let somebody give you a narrative that put you in a box take on the narrative that god has given you you go on i want you to go into the holidays recognizing who and what he says about me that's your blessing what god says about you you're a child of god it doesn't matter about people it doesn't matter about their narrative don't only narrative is god amen god bless you love you too I like that. That's a blessing. Man. You know, I like the you know, like my mom said, you know, this is the day the Lord has made and I rejoice and be glad in it, you know. And then even my brother here, Elder Johnson, this is the uh, study about Joseph, uh, pressure. He said that guy. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're in the point. I hope you're getting some understanding of what we're talking about. And we'll catch you on session, uh, what will it be session three coming up, right? Amen. God bless you.